everyone, welcome to Forbes Flash. Thanks for joining, and let's get started. And stick around, because later we'll have Carrie Dolan talking about the potential implosion of the country's biggest community foundation. Wednesday was a rough day for SNAP co-founders Evan Spiegel and Bobby Murphy, who lost a combined $1.3 billion just like that when SNAP stock dove 20% during after-hours trading. That's a 20% drop in both of their net worths, which fell from $3.2 billion each to $2.5 billion. With their fortunes so tied up in SNAP stock, the young billionaires are susceptible to fluctuations in stock. So, what caused the drop? The company missed Wall Street's expectations on revenue and user growth, despite, or because of, a January app redesign. You know Sinclair Broadcasting Group as the media company that has, as of late, sparked ire in liberals and left-leaning media. Well, the company behind it, the Smiths, are worth a combined $1.2 billion. Despite criticism for bias, business is good. The company's revenues have increased 281% over the last decade, and a 367% increase in share price has pushed the market cap up to $3 billion. The Smith brothers aren't looking to slow down anytime soon. Sinclair's proposed acquisition of Tribune Media would give it 42 more stations, growing their reach from 40% of U.S. households up to 72%. Here's a few stories you might have missed this past week. Things are ramping up at Tesla's Fremont, California factory as the company tries to deliver cars to waiting customers. The factory will move to 24-hour operations and hire 400 people per week for several weeks. But this boost isn't a sign of confidence, it's more like desperation. Not only will the cost of hiring so quickly put the company in a tough cash position, putting so many newbies on the assembly line is, according to some, a recipe for disaster. A recent survey confirmed what many could probably have guessed, Americans are lonely. In fact, 46% of those surveyed felt alone either sometimes or always. The loneliest generation is Generation Z, those 18 to 22 year olds. And despite what you may think, there wasn't a link in heavy social media use and loneliness. There was, however, evidence that those who balanced sleep, physical activity, work, and family interactions were less lonely than those who didn't. After more than a century as one of the biggest names in the music biz, famed guitar maker Gibson filed for bankruptcy this week. The company reportedly owes as much as $500 million. Though several dozen companies were contacted about a purchase, no deal was finalized in time. Our Under 30 Summit Global starts this weekend. Hundreds of young entrepreneurs from around the world will meet in Tel Aviv, Israel to hear from notable leaders. Follow along with hashtag Under 30 Summit across social media for live coverage. We unveiled our latest cover star this week, French President Emmanuel Macron. The focus of the story, his goal to make France a hub for entrepreneurship. He's taking serious steps to make it happen pushing through new employment laws that make it easier to hire and fire, putting $18 billion into professional retraining over the next five years, and slashing at taxes on wealth, capital gains, and worker compensation. Quote, I will not abandon or diminish the ambition of the reform, says Macron, quote, because there's no other choice. Joining us now is Forbes Wealth Editor Carrie Dolan to discuss the Silicon Valley Foundation and the depth of its inner turmoil. Sixteen billionaires, including Mark Zuckerberg, the co-founders of WhatsApp, Dustin Moskovitz, Reed Hastings of Netflix, Jack Dorsey of Square and Twitter, have donated collectively billions of dollars of stock to a foundation in Silicon Valley that most people don't know about. It's called the Silicon Valley Community Foundation. and. It's grown to be the largest community foundation in the country, $13.5 billion in assets, um, because of donations from these billionaires. I spent months talking to very upset former employees who were complaining about the treatment there that they received. It was a really awful workplace for them. And lo and behold, the number two person at the foundation who is the source of a lot of the bad treatment resigned a couple weeks ago after the Chronicle of Philanthropy published uh, detailed allegations about workplace and sexual harassment perpetuated by this former number two person. Then the, then the CEO of the foundation was put on leave and then the uh, head of HR also resigned just a few days ago. The, the uh, board hired this prestigious law firm, Boys Schiller, uh, famous because of David Boys, who 
um, most recently represented Harvey Weinstein last year. Um, Boy Schiller is trying to lead an investigation into what exactly went down at this foundation. One of the things that's happened is some donors have t walked away with their money. Brian Acton, one of the founders of WhatsApp, had donated more than $200 million worth of Facebook stock to this foundation, and he moved his money to Fidelity last year, according to his spokesperson. Another donor that I spoke with on the record, Becky Morgan, who had been a longtime donor there, moved her money to Fidelity at last year. She told me she had poor service, and she didn't feel like the CEO um, was listening to her when she was asking to be connected with other donors with similar interests. Um, so it's, a, it's quite a mess. Um, and I think the billionaires are probably wishing that they maybe didn't put their money there because it doesn't seem like such a great place. I mean, there is a new CEO who's trying to, uh, an interim CEO who's trying to improve uh, the conditions there and we'll see what happens. The investigation is ongoing. Thanks for joining us. Tweet your feedback using hashtag Forbes Flash. We're off next week, but we'll be back the following week, Friday morning, same time, same place.